you. Stephanie, would you go ahead and roll? do the roll call, please? Yes. Member Horning? Yes. <clears throat> Member Gershenlauer? And he will have an unexcused absence for the record. Member Bryant? We'll have an excused absence for the record. Member Lamud? Here. Vice Chair Stark? We'll have an excused absence for the record. Member Jones? Here. Chair Clark? Present. Member Estill? He will also have an excused absence for the record. And Member Day? Here. And Member Day will be a voting member this evening. Great. So we have a quorum. We have a quorum. All right. We have our minutes from December 14th. Did everyone have a chance to review those? And um, were there any corrections that need to be made? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion to uh, accept the minutes. I move to approve. I have a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Do I have a second? I second. Anybody else but me? <laughs> <laughs> second by Member Lamug. Uh, since there wasn't any discussion or correction, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, likewise. The minutes have been approved for December 14th. That brings us on to new business, certificate of appropriateness by uh, application, 1116 Florida Avenue. Christina, I'll open the dais to you. The applicant is requesting approval from the HPD to replace an exterior door and windows and to change the location of door and windows. And I've got, here's the property right here. Um, proposed alterations include the replacement of two exterior windows on the north elevation, replacement of two exterior windows and one entry door on the east elevation, removal of a window on the south elevation, and installation of porch flooring on the east elevation. The building is located within the boundaries of the city's historic preservation district and has been identified in the 2020 historic resource survey to be non-contributing. According to the Osceola County property appraiser, the 741 square foot building was built in 1925 and has been maintained as a residential use. And I've got the image up here and the property was purchased on September 7, 2021 for 85,000. I'm not going to read the whole staff report to you. I'm just going to give you some highlights. Uh, Bernadette McKenzie, zoning manager, and I did go on a site visit on December 13th, and there were some interior modifications that had already been conducted, but some of these modifications would affect the exterior work that was being proposed, so the applicant did have to stop work. Uh, we were able to assist the applicant with getting an early start work, work permit to get some of the work um, done while he waited for the board meeting. Um, so that's what I, I've got in the background. So the permit for the interior work was given with the understanding that the location of door and window openings would be considered by the Historic Preservation Board at today's meeting. The applicant was advised to consider this when modifying interior elements so as not to have to redo the work if the board did not approve the request proposed. The applicant understood, and the early work permit did not guarantee that the request for door or window replacement would be approved. So what I've done with the staff report is since he's got a couple of things to minimize confusion, I've broken it down into the various elevations. So the first thing in your staff report is the north elevation. Now I've got figures three to five reflect the proposed alterations on this north elevation. And those alterations include infill of three existing windows, and the wall cladding is to match existing, installation of a new 30 and, a, 30 and a half inch by 37 and a half inch window, which requires modification to the dimensions of the existing opening. The request for these changes is to accommodate the creation of two bedrooms. The existing window openings are too small in their design, which is jealousy, does not meet egress requirements for bedrooms as outlined in the Florida Building Code. And here is the figure for that that shows the location. So highlighted there in um, red is where the windows would be removed and these are the windows right here so those windows would be removed and one window which is in the blue there would be installed at the correct size and that is the design of the window that would be installed right there for the east elevation we've got figure six through eight in your staff report which reflect these proposed alterations and they are removal of existing wood entry door, 
And in the staff report I have is, is historic and appears to be original. It is a historic door, but after some more research and information provided by the applicant, it is not original to this building. There, we have photographic evidence that shows there was a different door here. As, um, as of 2007, we know from photographic evidence there was a different door there. So removal of that entry door and infilling of the opening with wall cladding to match the existing. Installation of a new steel entry door into the existing window opening. That would require modification to the dimensions of the existing window opening. And installation of a new 30 and a half inch by 37 and a half inch window. That would require modification to the dimensions of the existing window opening. Can you move the slideshow forward to the figures nine and ten? Yes. So that oh. we're keeping up. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. I just want to make sure that everybody else understands where we're at. Did I have some figures reversed? Okay, you're, sorry you're talking about the south elevation? Got it. I was on the east elevation. Oh, I'm sorry, east so elevation is six through yeah. eight. So I apologize. Okay. Um, so the location, this, this request is also like the last one. There's a jealousy window there, but, and that doesn't meet the egress requirements for a bedroom, but the location of the bedroom footprint and location of bedroom entry could be modified so the original door opening and existing door can remain intact. So. He's just at the, the building was gutted and he's at the framing stage right now. So he could potentially modify, let me bring it up here. He could modify this floor plan a little bit so that it wouldn't require him to move that entry door. So I just wanted to make a note of that. This would allow for retention of the second window, which is currently proposed for replacement with a new steel door. So just as a little bit of clarification, let me see if I could get this pointer. I don't want to turn this off. Well, I color coded it for a reason, right? <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if the if the door is not allowed to be shifted, how does how does the floor plan function? Because then the door would be opening into a bedroom. Yeah, he'd he'd have to kind of notch out that wall and have the bedroom door back further where those closet doors are. Okay. So there would have to be modification to that framing. So just as a recap to make it a little bit more clear, he is proposing um, the one that I have in blue font. That is to install the same window that I showed you, which is this window. So it would be that mm -hmm. 30 and a half inch by 37 and a half inch window. Right now in that place is a jealousy window. And basically what would happen with the two with the red font is their placement would get reversed. So the window would flip to the location that the door currently is, and the door would flip to the location that the window currently is. Okay. Just, I guess, the point of question in the um, one photo, you've got an air conditioner in the window uh, where the door su replacement suggestion is being proposed. Um, how is air conditioning happening with the unit? That'll be a question that we'll have for the applicant at some point just to understand um, whether we're just moving the air conditioner to another window. Um, so. Okay. It's my understanding that it's central heat and air, but I'll let the applicant answer that when he comes okay, up fine. to discuss. Okay, so the next elevation that we're going to talk about is the south elevation. Figures 9 through 10 in your staff report reflect the proposed alterations. And that is infill of one existing window opening with wall cladding to match. So you've got that there in the red font and a picture to show you. So that's an existing window. It's a small window. It's way in the back there. Um, not even really visible from the street. So requesting to cover that over to accommodate the interior range arrangement, which is for a kitchen. So he wants to be able to put kitchen cabinets up and all that. Okay. So ordinance number 2018-57, City of St. Cloud Land Development Code, Article 3, Division 24, Historic Preservation Overlay District, Section 3.24.8. I want to focus on, and these are the Secretary of the Interior standards. Standard number two is the historic character of a property shall be retained and preserved. The removal of historic materials or alterations of features and spaces that characterize a property shall be avoided. 
Okay. So the historic character of a property shall be retained and preserved. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize a property shall be avoided. So looking at that um, on the north elevation, that's the side elevation. The request is to accommodate the creation of two bedrooms. The window openings are too small to meet the code and the design of the windows is not in compliance as well. Um, on the east elevation, it's also to create, to, to accommodate the creation of a bedroom. Again, same thing with the jealousy windows. And the applicant has undertaken interior framing for the proposed location of the bedroom. Of course, the applicant does understand that even though they've done interior framing, it does not require HPD to uh, approve that request. That would eliminate the location of that original entry door and flip it with the window. And I think I've already, yeah, I've already um, actually discussed what Chair, Chair Clark, we talked a little bit. Let me just back up a couple of slides, a point that will probably come up um, about the area where the jealousy windows are, that whole area. Let's see. Here we go. It's kind of blocked by the tree, but the area that's under the gable roof, that's the original part of the house. So the area that's under that kind of like flat kind of shed roof, that's all in addition. So that it was a later addition, hence the jealousy windows and, and all of that. So I just wanted to bring that up uh, for clarification in, in case any of you are wondering. So what we're looking at under the gable is part of the original uh, part of the house there. Okay, so I'm going to get into the recommendations. Staff recommends the HPD approve the request to infill three existing window openings with wall cladding to match existing and to install a new 30 and a half by 37 and a half inch window, which requires modification to the dimensions of the existing window opening on the north elevation of 1116 Florida Avenue. This is based on a finding that the proposed alterations are consistent and in purpose with the intent of ordinance number 2018-57, City, City of St. Cloud Land Development Code, and that it complies with the requirements outlined in the ordinance, as I've outlined in the staff report. And specifically, the proposed alterations do not remove historic materials or alter features and spaces that characterize the property. Staff recommends the HPD approve the request to install a new 30 and a half inch by 37 and a half inch window, which requires modifications to the dimension of the existing window opening on the east elevation at 1116 Florida Avenue based on a finding that the proposed alteration is consistent with the purpose and intent of ordinance number 2018-57, City of St. Cloud Land Development Code, and complies with the requirements outlined in the ordinance. Specifically, the proposed alteration does not remove historic materials or alter features and spaces that characterize the property. So the third one, staff is recommending the HPD deny the request to remove the existing wood entry door and infill the opening with wall cladding to match existing and install a new steel entry door into an existing window opening which will require modification to the dimensions of the existing window opening on the east elevation of 1116 Florida Avenue. Based on a finding that the proposed alteration is not consistent with purpose and intent of ordinance number 2018-57, City of St. Cloud Land Development Code, and complies with the and does not comply with the requirements outlined in the ordinance. Specifically, the proposed alterations do remove historic materials and alter features and spaces that characterize the property. And just to be clear, I'm breaking it down the same way I did it in the staff report. That's why you have multiple uh, recommendations. So you can do them by, by elevation to keep the confusion down. And lastly, staff is recommending the HPD approve the request to infill one existing window opening with wall cladding to match existing on the south elevation of 1116 Florida Avenue based on a finding that the proposed alteration is consistent with purpose and intent of ordinance number 2018-57, City of St. Cloud Land Development Code, and that it does comply with the requirements outlined in the ordinance. Specifically, the proposed alterations do not remove historic materials or alter features and spaces that characterize the property. All right. Thank you. Uh, the applicants here, uh, would you like to come up, introduce yourself? and um, say anything if you have anything that you want to specifically address at this time before I open up discussion to the board members. 
If you'll step up to the mic, uh, identify yeah, who you are and where you live. Um, my name is Roberto Ramos de Rosas, and it is Claudia Mosquera. Um, she is actually the owner of the property, okay. Uh, okay, but I'm the one that's actually taking care of the entire remodeling inside of the house. Okay. Um, and where you live? Uh, and where she lives? I, she lives in Wendermere, and I live here in San Clau. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you need the addresses specifically for the location, Stephanie? I can't remember. Um, if you could just state the addresses just so I have them in case. Do you want me to say to you? Yes, your you address, for, just for yeah, the Yeah, just record. state for the record your addresses. Okay, it's a 162 Owen Shire Circle, Kissimmee, Florida, 34744. And, and your, your address in Windermere, please. 8776 Lookout Point Drive, Windermere, 34786. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Did you, did you have anything that you wanted to say at this time to the board before we start discussion? Or um, well, I think everything everything was clearly explained by uh, Christine here. So, um, if there are any questions that come out yes, during we'll, the discussion, we'll ask you to step up. Would, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Then, yeah. all right. Then I'll go ahead and open the floor to uh, board members. Uh, if the board members would like to bring up discussion. If it's going to be quiet, so I'll, I'll go ahead and start. Um, Christine and I uh, discussed this briefly beforehand just so she can give me a clarification. And um, as she pointed out, the area to the north is an addition uh, to this building. If you look at the floor plan, um, basically what that gave us historically is probably a shotgun home. Um, the jealousy windows obviously are not uh, historic in nature, so um, that's to keep in mind. The one thing that she and I touched on was the, if you look at the um, the cladding on the home, obviously that's not historic either, but uh, it was explained that that's a architectural uh, plywood, uh, decorative plywood over the top of that. So uh, since it's a renovation, we're not necessarily having to hold him to change any materials at this point in time. If, he's, if we go forward with making the changes, he's going to repair it. He's found uh, the cladding that matches that. So it'll have a continuous look, uh, just to keep in mind in that regard. Um, let's see what else. Uh, the one thing that I noted, um, staff mo moved to deny in regards to the movement of the door placement, and um, I asked whether or not that was confirmed whether that door was actually original and uh, was told that based on the interior demolition was able to be determined that the door location did look to be original as far as location. I was a little surprised at that because given the fact that it appears uh, we don't have the original floor plan but just the narrowness of that it would typically have lent to it to a shotgun home and architecturally those doors would have been in line and so um, I was you know mentioning to Christine that I would be more um, apt to want the doors to be in line architecturally, um, but that's again for all of us to uh, discuss uh, in that regard. And so basically it sounds like this house might have one existing window that's original, the rest are all um, later added, and the front door is also not original um, and was not added. So I agree with um, what you're saying about the shotgun houses typically were in line, so mm -hmm. I would have no issue with it being moved because I feel like that may be what it was at one time. I know that they're saying it looked like it, but... Well, uh, Christine indicated the frame, the framing inside didn't support that. I'm just saying it would that would make it non-typical for a typical shotgun. Yeah. But since we're talking about the historic nature also of it, it would still be in keeping with the historical nature of a shotgun home if we supported the movement of that, in my opinion. I agree. Um, the one thing that I probably wouldn't agree is the shifting to a, a steel door because it would not be a material that's appropriate to the style of the home. I would, if, if the rest agree with the movement of the door, I would probably be more inclined to stick with a wood door that's uh, keeping in nature with the historic uh, age of the home of the 1925 uh, style. So you're probably looking at a wood door with some glass. It can, be, can, it can be a replica of what the existing door looks like right now, but new. And but, it, but it would be, yeah, but it would be a wood material. It wouldn't wood be a steel material. door. Because you got wood and glass right now. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, 
as far as the infill on the windows um, on the south face, it's to the very far rear. So I personally don't have a, a big problem because visually it's not an impact to the home. It's not, uh, in looking at the, the picture, the size of it is actually not in keeping with the rest of the size of the windows either. So there's nothing um, specific uh, that would bother me about doing an infill on that. Um, so those are my thoughts, and, um, and I appreciate Member Lamug's input. Does any other members have input on what they're seeing? Um, I agree with the, the shotgun doors. They just It kind of makes sense to me more to actually move the door. Good. Make sure you're speaking in the microphone or pull it back closer to you. So that Sorry, it actually record. makes more sense to me to, to move the door because it does give the feel of the shotgun home. Okay. I'm also um, in agreement with the steel door would not. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. If we were to allow for the movement of the door um, from a standpoint of the uh, current elevation on that, the porch, the enclosure, the stairs, and the access is not in line with that proposed location. So would you be, I guess I would, I would want the access on the porch and the stairs moved to be in line with your new door if it were to be moved. Is that a problem? It, it, uh, the steps for, to the porch mm -hmm. are concrete. Correct. Which will require a, new, a new driveway has been already placed on it and it was already re resurfing. Okay. So it will be a, a new work and uh, an extra investment in cost that is not right now on the budget. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, architecturally, I'm bringing this up. I mean, it's, from a historic yeah. preservation standpoint, I don't know that yeah. it's significant other than the fact that it'll look a little um, a little off. Yeah. Do we know if that porch has been there from the beginning, if that's historical? Christine. <laughs> Those concrete steps would not be original. This is on a slight pier foundation, so they would have originally been wood steps, not the concrete. So I don't know what date those would have been added, but they would have been added. Do you know later. if those walls there would have been original? I don't, but if you want my professional opinion, that would have been an open porch That's without what I was having that surround. That I think when they put the cladding on the rest of the house, they just added that for aesthetic purposes. They probably thought it looked better, but that was likely just an open porch that did not have railings. Yeah. So I'm wondering if maybe if they just opened the porch back up, then it would look, and it wouldn't interfere with the driveway they put in. They do have some porch repairs that they have to do because they have like plywood down right now. And we talked about the fact that the porch repairs would, would have to happen. Just one note, since I'm up here anyway, that I wanted to add, and Chair Clark did touch upon it. When you get to making your motion, I know I didn't put this in my suggested motion, but if you could just make note that the approval for that wall cladding is only for a limited area for repair, because that's a non-conforming material. We don't want to have a future applicant come and say, we want to clad our whole building with this. You let somebody else do it. So if you could just make it clear whenever you're making your motion. But, I, yeah, I, I do not believe that to be original to the porch. Okay. Member Jones, no, no comments or whatnot. Member Horning, did you have anything? Um, anything else? Okay. All right. Just as a reminder, as chair, I don't make motions, so the, the, one of the four of you will get to be going through uh, the motions. Uh, so I will open... Uh, if, you have, if you don't have any questions of the applicant, uh, I'd open the floor for motions. That's going to be me. I need to be talked you, through that. <laughs> well, I mean, I did it last time. you're. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, you, you've got it all written out. If 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 the door, the the, the one the one suggestion as far as the the, the door. Uh, if you're going to approve it, then you just that's the only one that you're really going to have to think and, and edit more. I think that okay. other than the cladding material comments, the rest of the suggested motions are there. Okay, so I'll go ahead and start with the first one. I move to approve the request to infill three existing window openings 
with wall cladding to match existing and install a new 30 and a half by 37 and a half window, which requires modification to the dimensions of the existing window opening on the north elevation of 1116 Florida Avenue, based on a finding that the proposed alterations are consistent with the purpose and intent of ordinance number 2018 city of St. Cloud land development code, article three, division 24, Historic Preservation Overlay Districts, Section 324.8, and complies with the requirements outlined in Ordinance Number 2018-57, as outlined in the staff report. Specifically, the proposed alterations do not remove historic materials or alter features and spaces that characterize the property. Did you want to add anything in regards to the cladding? Is that what I'm um, adding, the cladding part? <laughs> Just noting that the cladding is... Um, just for repair and, okay. and not um, improve material otherwise. Uh, so that the wall cladding will be only for repair purposes. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Member Jones. Do we have further discussion? All right. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed signify likewise. That motion would be passed. I'll open the floor again for the next motion. I move to approve the request to install a new 30 and a half by 37 and a half window, which requires modification to the dimensions of the existing window opening on the east elevation of 1116 Florida Avenue, based on a finding that the proposed alteration is consistent with the purpose and intent of ordinance number 2018-57, City of St. Cloud Land Development Code, Article 3, Division 24, HPO District, Section 324-8, and complies with the requirements outlined in ordinance number 2018 as outlined in the staff report. Specifically, the proposed alterations does not remove historic materials or alter features and spaces that characterize the property. Second. Motion has been made and by Member Lamont, seconded by Member Jones. Further discussion? All right, all those in favor of the motion to approve, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, signify likewise. Motion carries. I'll open the floor for the next motion. If you want to drop down and do the next easy one, you can do that. Thank you. <laughs> I move to approve the request to infill one existing window opening with wall cladding to match existing on the south elevation of 116, 1116 Florida Avenue based on a finding that the proposed alteration is consistent with the purpose and intent of Ordinance Number 2018-57, City of St. Cloud Land Development Code, Article 3, Division 24, Historic Preservation Overlay District Section 324A and complies with the requirements outlined in Ordinance Number 2018-57 as outlined in the staff report. Specifically, the proposed alterations do not remove historic materials or alter features and spaces that characterize the property. And again, the wall cladding is for the infill only for the repair purposes. Second. All right, I have a motion to approve and I have a second. Further discussion? All right, we'll move to the motion. All those in favor of the approved motion, or excuse me, the motion to approve, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, signify likewise. Motion passes. Then I'll open the floor for the last uh, item, which is the uh, entry door motion. Oh, I'm going to bite the bullet on this one. Member Jones wants to uh, go for this. All right. I'd like to go down in flames. That's my... <laughs> Uh, I'm going to have to make some adjustments to this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move to approve the request to remove the existing wood entry door and infill the opening with wall cladding to match existing and install a new wood entry door in an existing window opening which will require modification to the dimensions of the existing window opening on the east elevation of 1116 Florida Avenue based on a finding that the proposed alteration is not consistent. Is consistent. Is consistent. It, that is consistent, sorry. No, just keeping us all straight. With the purpose and intent of ordinance number 
2018-57 City of St. Cloud Land Development Code, comma, Article 3, Division 24, Historic Preservation Overlay outlined in the staff report, specifically the proposed alterations do not remove historic material or materials or alter features and spaces that characterize the property. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second on this motion? I second. All right, seconded by Member Lamont. Is that correct? No. Oh, Number day. Number day. Sorry. Just, my ears weren't hearing the direction. These panels are throwing it off. Um, all right. Further discussion. Does anyone have any further discussion on this? I guess my only further discussion would just be to, to strongly recommend that you um, consider the adjustment to the porch um, approach. If you could um, make it a little more historically compliant, whether or not you know, I understand budget um, by demoing that concrete and coming back in with a, a wood stair, which would be a, of an affordable fix, I think that you would find that it would lend it to be more historically appropriate as well as more functional for um, you as the homeowner. Um, but I'm not suggesting that it be a requirement, but I am strongly recommending that you consider that. Any other further discussion? No. I'm sorry, did you? In terms of the door, if we get approved to move the door to the, exi to the existing window, can we make the door a little bit bigger than the size that it is right now? Because the existing door is only 30 inches wide. Okay. It's very, it's, it's very... Okay. Okay. I, I understand what the request is, Christina. I mean, from a historic standpoint, the, the door width isn't going to be an issue. Um, you could almost say there's an ADA. I mean, a 30-inch door is very difficult, so I don't believe that that's an issue. Did we dis describe the dimension? We did not describe the dimension of the door, so I don't believe that's going to be an issue. Um, so we can make it and bring that in. You, if you, need, if you needed to go to a 34-inch door instead of a 30, and that's the, there's nothing in the motion that we've made that would pro prohibit that. 30, 34 is a max single. Or 36. Or 36. Usually it's a good compliance. I mean, door. I don't know from, from a historic standpoint that 34 or 36 is going to be an issue. Christina, do you, I mean, structurally, do you think that it's going to be an issue? Okay. So, so, do we need to add that to the motion, or do you, do you feel that the motion as it is is going to be appropriate? All right. So then we'll you know work with Christina and the building department in order to determine what width is appropriate. Okay. All right. If there's no further discussion, I'll uh, call the the motion the motion to approve uh, the movement of the door. All those in favor, signify by yeah, by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify likewise. All right. The motion for this also passes. So, um, congratulations, you. Thank you. Have, Thank you. you have a certificate of appropriateness uh, with uh, direction on where you can go and what you can do. All right. So now, is there any other um, uh, documentation that we need? I mean, if we want to start doing the work right now, can we? Or we have to wait for. Okay. Yep. Chris, you can get with Christine as far as what needs to happen for the building department to, to be released and the appropriate certificate of appropriateness to be officially given to you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate that. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Thank you very much. We appreciate you coming tonight. All right. That takes us no new business unless uh, somebody snuck something in while I wasn't looking. I think there's still something on our agenda. Yes, there is. There's old old business. I'm just saying that because we started with new business. So unless uh, somebody's got new business, we're shifting over to old business, which is the CLG annual report. Yeah, my apologies. I had intended to include the copy of the annual report in your packet, and I did not. So that is my fault. But the annual report did get over to the state. And uh, it includes information on, you know, the number of certificate of appropriatenesses that were reviewed in uh, between November of 2020 and the end of September 2021. 
and just a couple of other things about the progress of historic preservation in St. Cloud and your program. So I apologize that I didn't have that. What I'll make sure is that we get that out to you via email. And if you have any questions, then we can discuss it at the next meeting. Okay. Okay. Well, great. So at this time then, uh, whole business will be concluded. We open the floor for public comment. I think our only public left. <laughs> So we'll close the public comment and go to individual board comments. Uh, Member Jones, do you have any comments that you wish to make this evening? Surprisingly, no, other than uh, I felt we had a good work session, uh, excellent work session, and a good meeting. Uh, I tried to be quiet tonight. <laughs> I'd say I appreciate it, but I, I mean, I don't have a problem with anybody speaking up and, and sharing their input. So thank you. Okay. Member Lamont. Um, just one thing um, we were actually, I thought about outside earlier. Um, do they, I feel like it's going to become a problem at some point unless you, I don't know if there's already something in place when they turn the application in, but if we will need a translator at some point, or like you were saying, um, somebody that's hearing impaired. Um, but if we have something in place for them, then that we will know ahead of time, because I can see that happening. Yeah, it, if there is an applicant that has um, some special needs, they are supposed to alert us to that in advance of the meeting so we can accommodate that. Okay. But if it's something that you have extra concern about, I can ask about that. Not really extra concern, just thought about it. <laughs> yeah. It's a valid concern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Member Horn. Oh, I, thought, um, I thought the meeting, both, both sessions were very good tonight. Yeah, got a lot done. Yeah. Learned a lot. Good. Thank you. Member Day, did you have any individual comments? Um, no, great session both times. Um, and I really like Ms. Lamont's um, suggestion. I think it's on there automatically for them to check. I think that would be beneficial for us in the future and them as well. My only comment will be to thank you, Christine, for, for continuing to help us, if you will, learn our jobs and, and how we need to do it, uh, giving us, you know, suggested motions. Uh, even if, uh, like we did tonight, didn't quite comply with all of yours, but hey, you know. That's why you're here. You're still batting 750, so. You know, <laughs> you know I, I like this because two times now you have done meetings where you didn't exactly parrot my suggested motion and that's good because you did it in the correct way and that's part of the process is you know these are just suggested motions for you but to think about it as a board member and your role and how you're supposed to craft them and I think both meetings that you all did really well so I actually I'm kind of happy that it worked out like that because I'm watching you all trying to get your footing and kind of really, you know, get into your role. So that's great. Great. Thank you. Our next meeting is Tuesday, February 8th at 6 p.m. But we're going to be workshopping beforehand, correct? Yes. Yeah. So yes. in addition to that, remember, you know, our beforehand workshop. Yeah. And with that, we will adjourn the meeting. Thank you, everyone. 6.42. Thank you. Christine, your packet was excellent today.